Welcome everybody. I'm pleased to have the opportunity today to present SIPCA, Crisis Intervention Program for Children and Adolescents. Uh, Dr. Nizar already mentioned something about the background, and that's why I'm going to uh, just describe a little bit more about the background before coming to the contents of the program and how we developed it and then our pilot study from the beginning uh, when we applied the project in the book and then uh, something about uh, the follow-up that uh, our presenters are going to mention more details. I know that uh, some of you probably want to uh, interrupt and question, has questions about the terminology, the content, the instrument, and um, because all the concept is connected together, I would be very happy if all the questions will be left to the last, because I think many of your wondering and questions from the start will be answered by the next uh, represent, uh, presentations. Then you are most welcome, of course, to discuss, to have questions, and we will be very happy to have access to your experiences too. I think we are, with uh, SIPCA, opening a window or a door to a new subject in psychiatry, and that's vaccinations. Up to today, we have no vaccination in psychiatry. Why? There is vaccination in all medicine, and psychiatry, because it's a specialty within medicine, we have to think about that. And we know that vaccination has been the instrument to eradicate most of the infectious diseases from the childhood and adult. And we have trauma as an external factor. Let us see what happens to a child when the child becomes exposed to an external factor which come in in the mind of the child leading to disturbances in information processing and that's what we know up to date but we know also the science is rapidly developing especially regarding technology and we know that post-traumatic psychopathology is not only limited to PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder and we know also as, the, as you hear in the introduction lectures in this congress that about 50% of all psychopathology start before the age of 60. And uh, early identification of the disturbances after exposure to uh, adverse life events, among others traumatic also, are considered within stress research. And that's from the biological point of view. I think it's time to reach stress theories from the childhood trauma side also. There is a lot of research. If we are combining the two points of view, from the stress point of view to the childhood trauma, then we are going to discover that we are talking about the same thing. That's why I usually associate our instrument, our intervention, to the background, to the evidence. Recent evidence is brought up to the CIPCA development from these sciences. You can see first aid, there is not only the first aid in the medical science, we have just now 
Psychological Thursday. It has been developed within the WHO and it has been used widely in order to take care of people who have just been in psychological uh, distress or psychological crisis. Well, prevention is the science, as I mentioned, it is developing, and day after day, the science is showing that prevention is always better than treatment. So we can bring much of that knowledge to the development of new instruments. And we know vaccination and immunology is a very big science and has a background which has been established very well and the human beings have taken a lot of benefit from that method of prevention. <clears throat> Psychopathology, as you, um, I mentioned, it is not only PTSD, but we know that PTSD was the first diagnosis which was related to a specific event. At the beginning, it was only adult-focused, as usual, in many things. The adults, and particularly men, are those who are coming to the benefit at the first. Then it is women, then it is time for children. So PTSD was discovered among men, and then the women were included, and now we know much about psychopathology which is developed during childhood. So, consequences of trauma are very much more than during childhood than during adulthood. The chronicity, the complexity of the uh, disturbances uh, are causing very more damage to the person and to the society. Prenatal diagnosis also is rapidly developing diagnostics and it leads to early intervention in childhood and that is leading gradually to interventions as early as possible, even prenatal. Why we can use more rapid development within child and adolescent psychiatry because it is multidisciplinary. Many professions are similarly important as medicine. You cannot work effectively, adequately effective as a child psychiatrist if you don't have a team with you composing of psychologists, clinical psychologists, social workers, pedagogues, nurses, and so on. Cognitive behavioral psychotherapy have been shown the most effective way to interfere with psychopathology. It has the highest evidence that it is effective and we can use the techniques of cognitive therapy both in interventions, early interventions among children who are exposed to trauma to have intervention and even to have treatment. Salatogenesis, as you know, is gradually taking place instead of pathogenesis. It means that we are looking at the signs of health more and more than the signs of pathology. And we know that the recent trauma theories, as I mentioned, are approaching many other disciplines, among other stress theories in the biology, but even other professions than medicine. What's the aim of SIPCA? The effectiveness of SIPCA is aimed at saving time and it is cost effective. 
during crisis situations. It must help us to have both identification of disorders, disturbances, and have adequate access to treatment as early as possible. It has an evidence-based methodology, that means it is research-friendly from the start. That's why we have today's two years follow-up, because our project in the beginning was not research. But we could use the instrument in order to have evaluations which are qualified to be research. Preventing post-traumatic psychopathology is the major aim of this intervention, as I mentioned, and the aim, the last final aim, is to help the child develop healthy personality. The structure of CIPCA is consisting of one week training for trainers in group, two facilitators train up to 30 trainers together, every two trainers train up to 30 group leaders, every two group leaders then lead 30 children in one hour single group intervention. The target is up to date children and adolescents in crisis situations. Probably a day will come when even adults can have benefit from this intervention. <coughs> the function of CIPCA is an early crisis intervention. At the same time, we do screening of any already identified or developed psychological distress in order to be adequately treated as early as possible. It will be consisting of spontaneous expression of emotions. Nothing here is obligatory for the child. Everything is coming spontaneously. When the child in a group gets support to start speaking about negative events, negative experiences, it leads usually to other children get the support to start speaking about similar experiences, both regarding describing the events, similar events, memories, and emotional expression. It leads to a positive cognitive restructuring. That means the negative thoughts related to the traumatic events will be exchanged and replaced by positive thoughts. It will lead to an individual assessment for those children who already show psychological distress symptoms in order to get adequate treatment. We use instruments, as I say, in order to measure every moment in the SIPCA in such a way that it's possible to get access to data to be used for research. The main instrument here as a screening and to estimate change over time is child behavior checklist. How many of you are familiar with CBCL? Good, good, very nice. That's also a confirmation tool. This instrument is widely used. It is translated to more than 65 languages and it is updated all the time. There are several syndromes which have been developed based on the CBCL data. Among others, we have used a PTSD index from the CBCL, which is published. Then we have crisis expression guidelines. This is the core instrument used in the group intervention. This is the guidelines that is based on the cognitive techniques in order to help the child express emotions and verbalize 
experiences without feeling any fear or to be any force to do things. Then we use usually modified family map as genogram when doing the individual assessment for those children who are referred for psychiatric assessment. Those who show already psychological distress symptoms. That's in order to discover protecting factors and risk factors in development of psychopathology. The first project, as we mentioned, was developed according to the needs raised from the Islamic State's war in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. One of the most affected area in Iraq was Shingar. As you see, the mountain of Shingar was the place where most of the Yazidi families escaped from the attack of Islamic State. <clears throat> and Duhok is the nearest city to this region. So the city of Duhok, within two months, get a population which was doubled because of the internally displaced people. They were families largely conservative families, consisting of extended families. They became split and they started around the city of Duhu to seek after the family members. So it was the place when the most tragedies were found around Duhu. And I must mention here that to the results role there as a director of health in the whole, general director of health, was very big in applying and helping and arranging and organizing the AIDS campaigns, both in turn and from abroad. Among others, we get contact with the WHO. Here you see that WHO supported our project. That was the meeting when we informed about a project to develop SIFTA. We get not only support from the local authorities through the Tunisar and Directorate of Health, but also from the WHO office in the home. We collected professionals referred to us from the Health Directorate and trained them to trainers, certified trainers. This was the station we used. Matin Health House is a center for prevention and treatment of child mental health in Kurdistan. It is actually the first center in the Middle East to have this combination, the prevention and treatment at the same time. Here, we collected our teams, we trained our teams, and here was the station when we returned back at the evening from the refugee camps and started to reorganize and to visit the camps every day. <clears throat> Martin Health House is still under development. We have up to date two departments. One is a child psychiatric outpatient, and the other is child development, and child development is according to the Swedish model. We have been trained and educated in Sweden according to their system of protection, maternal and child health protection. And I am happy to say that the director of that department is here and she can comment the things if questions come regarding child development. Here you can see the teachers who were trained by our trainers to become group leaders inside the camps. So they are IDP teachers. And here you can see how they receive the information to be collected in groups 
in order to get training to become group leaders. The groups usually are like that. Children between the age of six to 12 years of age, or from 12 up to 11, uh, 18 years of age, were collected in separate groups. From three to 30 children were collected in a group. <coughs> <laughs> well, the pilot project training of trainers was within one week during November 2014. Then it was followed by training of group leaders the week after. We trained up to 300 group leaders during this time. And together, all of the 22,000 children, school children, received SIPCA during February to April 2015. 10% of those children who participated in group interventions showed psychological distress symptoms. They were referred for assessment. About 50% of those who were assessed by the child psychiatrist showed diagnosis which needed treatment. One year follow-up revealed promising results. As you see here, between the index and one year follow-up, both regarding internalizing, mixed externalizing, and PTZ index. There was no significant difference between boys and girls, even if boys apparently showed better effect. Two years follow up, you are going to hear more about that from the uh, presenters. Each one is going to take one aspect of the two years follow up. Here's the total one. You can see differences between those children who received SIPCA comp uh, compared to those who didn't receive SIPCA. And this is to show one year's follow-up, and then two years' follow-up. Thank you very much.